Good evening. This is Kathleen Drew, Chair of the Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council. Bringing to order the <clears throat> uh, public hearing for the Whistling Ridge Amendment. To begin with, I'd like to say that we have two meetings uh, for the two separate amendments that are both the subject uh, tonight for Whistling Ridge. And um, to say a little bit about that, in September 2023, Whistling Ridge Energy LLC submitted request to the Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council on two matters pertaining to the site certification agreement for the Whistling Ridge Energy Project. The first request seeks approval from the Council of a transfer of control of the certificate holder, Whistling Ridge Energy LLC from SDS Lumber Company to Twin Creek Timber LLC, TCT. The second request seeks an amendment of the SCA to extend its term to November 2026. FSEC invites you to participate in the consideration of this request. We are holding two separate but consecutive hybrid public hearings. The first one will be on the transfer of ownership. And the second will be on the SCA extension. We will start um, after we call the role of the council with um, a five minutes limit for those who are wishing to testify each. I would encourage you it, to say only what has gone unsaid before or to agree with previous speakers, but we will allow that amount of time. Secondly, um, it is only about the transfer of ownership request. So the second meeting will be about the SCA um, amendment. So I'd ask you to limit your comments to the, in the hearings um, appropriately. Um, I will now introduce Administrative Law Judge Laura Bradley, who will be managing the public hearing portion of the meeting. <clears throat> Judge Bradley. Good evening, everyone. As Ms. as Chair Drew indicated, my name is Laura Bradley. You I'm are on mute. I am. Oh, I can I can hear. Judge Bradley, I maybe the room cannot hear them. OK, you want to see if there's something going on in the room, Miss Grantham? Yes, let me see if I can message them really quick. This is Chair Drew. Testing. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes, I can hear you. OK, let's try. Let's try this once again. I did walk through the hearing notice, but I will now ask um, Ms. Shiley, who is calling the roll? Is it you? Is it Ms. Grantham? It is Ms. Grantham. Ms. Grantham, will you please call the roll? No problem, we will do. Uh, Department of Commerce? Elizabeth Osborne, present. Department of Ecology? Department of Fish and Wildlife? Mike Livingston, present. Department of Natural Resources. Lenny Young, present. Utilities and Transportation Commission. Stacy Brewster, present. Assistant Attorney Generals, John Thompson. Present. Jenna Slocum. Zach Packer. Administrative Law Judge, Laura Bradley. Present. And do we have someone present for the Council for the Environment? Yuri Carroll present. And then for council staff, I have Sonia Bumpus. Um, and then I'll move on to Amy Hofkemeyer. Present. Lance Caputo. I believe Lance is in the room. Is that correct, Chair Drew? Testing. Can you hear me online? Okay. Yes.
So do we want to go back to Sonia Bumpus and or Lance Caputo? They are both present. Thank you. And there is a quorum. Thank you, Chair Drew. Thank you. Moving on to the agenda in front of us. First, we'll hear from Whistling Ridge Energy Company, followed by a presentation on the amendment process by Lance Caputo and then public comments. Thank you, Chair Drew. <clears throat> this is Tim McMahon. Am I heard uh, throughout the universe here? Yes. All right, that's great. Um, Tim McMahon with Stories Law Firm. I'm here representing uh, Twin Creeks Timber and Whistling Ridge LLC. Whistling Ridge LLC is the site certificate holder, still is actually the site certificate holder. Um, and uh, so um, good to see you all. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. Um, this first part of the proceeding does, as, as Chair Drew indicates, um, constitutes a request for transfer of the site certificate. And we modeled, we began conversations last March with uh, Director Bumpus and others as, um, as we were trying to assess um, the process moving forward with the <coughs> Whistling Ridge Energy site. Um, and we spent a considerable amount of time uh, fashioning how we would go about that with FSEC staff. Um, um, on the, uh, as part of this, we are seeking, as noted, a request for transfer of the facility, and, and that's under um, WAC 463-66-100 transfer of the site certificate agreement. Um, <clears throat> so um, generally speaking, the requirement is, the fundamental requirement is, is whether uh, TCT um, and Wilson Ridge LLC show that it has the organizational and financial capability to permit, construct, and operate and retire the facility. And there are some interesting questions, frankly, um, on whether a transfer actually is necessary in these circumstances. We erred very much on the side of caution in taking this approach to ensure that um, there was a full opportunity to understand what we were doing and a full opportunity to engage the public. So with that, I'm going to push the mic over to my uh, client, and colleague Greg Corbin, and then there will be a short presentation thereafter from Chad Kamalt from um, from Steelhead or Vestas. Uh, so and we do have a PowerPoint and um, we'll just, uh, I think, should Greg just say next slide that you'll kind of fashion way. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Tim. <clears throat> uh, good evening, uh, Chair Drew, other council members, um, everybody online. Uh, my name is Greg Corbin, C-O-R-B-I-N. I'm with Green Diamond Resource Company. Um, my role at Green Diamond is uh, includes our company's uh, focus on renewable energy development opportunities on the lands that we own and or manage. Uh, what I want to do is uh, take just a couple of minutes to uh, explain who the various parties are here. You're going to hear Green Diamond, you're going to hear Green Diamond Resource Company, Green Diamond Management Company, Twin Creeks, Timber, Silver Creek. Uh, it, it can get confusing and so I will try to clarify all of that. Um, first of all, Green Diamond Resource Company is a sixth generation family owned company based in Seattle. Uh, Green Diamond manages approximately two million. The room audio dropped. It dropped as Mr. Corbin was saying 2 million. Shall I try again? Can, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Great. 2 million acres. Okay, uh, let me let me say that one again. So Green Diamond, uh, sixth generation family owned uh, timber company. Uh, we own and or manage about 2 million acres of timber land uh, in various portions of the United States. Um, about 600,000 of those acres um, are owned by Twin Creeks Timber LLC. Uh, it was a company that was formed in 2016 to own and manage commercial timber lands on behalf of its investors. Uh, TCT owns uh, timber lands in Washington, Oregon, and five states in the U.S. South. Silver Creek Advisory Partners, also based in Seattle, is the fiduciary manager of TCT, Twin Creeks. Twin Creeks is an investment entity that is managed by Silver Creek part, Advisory Partners. 
Silver Creek is an investment advisory registered with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. And as of June 30th of 2022, Silver Creek had $8.6 billion in assets under management across several different alternative and real estate investment strategies. Uh, and I will say um, this information is all contained in the actual transfer application. Uh, Green Diamond is a Green Diamond Resource Company is an investor in Twin Creeks Timber in TCT and through Green Diamond's subsidiary company, Green Diamond Management Company, we are the property manager responsible for the day to day operations of the TCT Timberlands. So um, we uh, we manage those lands in the same way that we manage the lands that we own in fee. Uh, getting to this particular topic here, in November of 2021, TCT acquired approximately two-thirds of the lands formerly owned by SDS Lumber Company. SDS was also the parent or owner of the, the sole owner of all of the membership interests in Whistling Ridge Energy LLC, the site certificate holder here. When we, when when TCT acquired the lands, it also acquired that membership interest. So the membership interest in Whistling Ridge Energy LLC was conveyed by um, just by documentation in the transaction from SDS Lumber to TCT. Um, Green Diamond and TCT uh, have substantial experience with renewable energy projects. Uh, having negotiated many wind and solar agreements in the West and South, and we are actively working with project developers to bring those projects to market. Green Diamond and TCT are financially sound uh, with the capacity, expertise, and partners necessary to develop the Whistling Ridge Energy Project and to comply with and meet the terms of the site certificate agreement through the project entity Whistling Ridge Energy LLC. Uh, for this project, we have, in addition to our own capacity and capabilities, we've hired a third party development consultant uh, to help us navigate through the development process and are partnering with a nationally recognized wind energy developer to pro provide additional necessary expertise. And this is the point at which I will turn it over to Chad to introduce himself and Steelhead Americas, our development partner. And if we could maybe go ahead and move the slides, or his just slides are in there. If we could move the slides forward until we get to the Steelhead Americas slides. So keep going. There, thank you. Good. Thanks, Red. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yeah, good evening, everyone. My name is Chad Como. I'm uh, Vice President of uh, Business Development and also one of the uh, co-founders of Steelhead Americas. Um, if, if someone could advance, please, to the to the next slide. <clears throat> so Steelhead Americas is the development subsidiary of of uh, Vestas AS, a, a Danish company, um, and we uh, formed back in 2016. So we've been in business for about eight years. Uh, sorry, 2015, 2016. Uh, we are now up to uh, 50 full-time employees. Uh, we've developed uh, over 1.5 gigawatts of projects to date across the United States. Um, uh, approximately five megawatt, uh, or sorry, five gigawatts of projects in development across uh, across 15 different states. Um, if you could uh, advance, maybe the next slide. So we we have our, our business model is to uh, originate projects, uh, fully develop them over the course of uh, you know it could be five or six years uh, to uh, to NTP and through 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 construction. So we have a full suite development shop uh, covering all the all necessary development verticals: origination, resource siting, permitting, financing, and then finally the project sale. Um, some of the projects we've developed below. You'll see there's uh, uh, there's a smattering of eight there, uh, ranging from you know as small as 99 megawatt solar project to uh, almost a 500 megawatt uh, uh, wind project in in Texas. But the vast majority of our our development across the U.S. Um, uh, is in is in wind development. Next slide, please. 
Uh, just again, a, a, just a slide to showing our, our uh, capabilities across uh, the 50 employees uh, covers the entire uh, spectrum of development that's necessary to uh, to bring Whistling Ridge to uh, to fruition. And the next slide. And this is just a smattering of some of the uh, partners that we've worked with. We've either, uh, our business model is to, um, uh, sometimes we sell all of our interests out at, uh, at NTP or COD, uh, start a construction or, or uh, when the project starts spinning. Uh, sometimes we retain a uh, minority interest in the project. And so these are a, a, a list of uh, very large independent power producers, uh, both domestic and multinationals that we've either sold projects to or partnered with over the last eight years. Um, it's important to note that we're a wholly owned subsidiary of, of Vestas uh, AS, a Danish company. Uh, this is the largest wind turbine manufacturer uh, um, in the world. There's, I think there's up to 30,000 employees across the globe right now, 55,000 turbines under service globally, installed uh, 179 gigawatts of turbines, um, and we're also uh, a $28 billion market cap right now. So we're uh, extremely strong balance sheet that uh, supports the steelhead development arm. And next, yeah, I think that's that's the steelhead invest this bio. Thank you. If you guys are speaking in the room again, we cannot hear you. All right, Chair Drew, are we ready to proceed with the uh, presentation by? The council staff. Can you hear me? Yes. We yes. Can. So we had one last sentence. Go ahead. <laughs> May I thank thank you, Chair Drew. Yes. Uh, Greg Corbin again for the record. Uh, I was just underscoring something uh, that Whistling Ridge Energy LLC continues to be the developer on the project. Uh, it is the same entity uh, all along. All, all that has changed here is the parent ownership interest in that LLC. Uh, so I didn't want to, having talked about all of the different entities and our partners and all of that, uh, to obfuscate the fact that the entity um, that holds the site certificate continues to hold the site certificate. Nothing has changed there. The, this transfer was uh, was filed out of an abundance of caution because we wanted to be uh, transparent about the fact that the parent had changed hands, but the actual developer entity has not changed at all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Caputo. First of all, can I have an audio check? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for participating this evening. My name is Lance Caputo. I am the siting specialist for FSEC assigned to this project. For those who are unfamiliar with our agency, I will be making a short presentation on the FSEC amendment process. Thank you. First, a quick history of FSEC. The Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council was created in 1970 for the siting of thermal power plants. The intent was to create a one-stop permitting agency for large energy facilities. Council membership is comprised of representatives of several state and local governments. The council reviews applications for the siting of clean energy projects before making recommendations on those projects to the governor. If the council decides to recommend approval of a prospective project, then its approval to the governor will include a draft certification agreement or a SCA, which defines all pre-construction, construction and operation plans. If the project is approved by the governor's office, then this decision will preempt other state or local rec uh, regulations. Multiple clean energy facilities fall under FSEC's jurisdiction. Some projects such as thermal power plant pro producing greater than 350 megawatts of electricity and other types of nuclear generation for the purpose of generating electricity to be sold on the market are required to be cited through FSEC. Others such as wind, solar, green hydrogen, energy storage, or clean energy manufacturing may seek FSEC review regardless of its size. Transmission lines greater than 115 kilovolts can also opt in while transmission lines carrying greater than 500 kilovolts 
are required to seek FSEC review. Threshold limits for pipelines and refineries that may be cited through FSEC are found in RCW 80.50.060. The council is comprised of members from various state agencies. There are voting members from five other agencies who are appointed by the agency directors. The current council consists of Chairwoman Kathleen Drew, Eli Levitt from the Department of Ecology, Mike Livingston from the, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, Elizabeth Osborne from the Department of Commerce, Lenny Young from the Department of Natural Resources, and Stacy Brucer from the Utilities and Transportation Commission. There are additional agencies that may elect to appoint a council member during the review of a new application. These agencies are the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Health, and the Military Department. The county within which the project occurs shall also appoint a representative to the council. If a proposal is located within a port district, the port district may appoint a non-voting member to assist the council. This slide is a map of the facilities that are certified or have applied for certification under FSEX jurisdiction. You can see marked in green, there are six operating facilities, including two natural gas facilities, one nuclear facility, one solar facility, and two wind facilities. The Kittitas Valley and Wild Horse facilities shown here are FSEC regulated facilities, but the other wind projects shown did not elect to site through FSEC. The blue marks indicate the four additional facilities that are approved but are not yet constructed, including the Whistling Ridge facility, which brings us here this evening. The clear circle is the one facility in the process of being decommissioned. FSEC is currently reviewing applications for six projects marked in yellow. Here is a flow chart showing the general process an applicant will go through when they submit an application for a new facility to FSEC. The Whistling Ridge proposal underwent this multi-tiered review at the time of application, as briefly described by the certificate holder during their presentation. I believe we lost audio to the room, just starting at the beginning of this PowerPoint slide. Joe Drew, can you hear me? Okay, it looks like they are refreshing it. I'm going to announce. Can you can you hear me, Judge Bradley? We are going yes. to. Yes. Uh, Mr. Young, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Chair Drew. Try this. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. OK, we are going to relocate to our conference room, which is fully on teams because of the difficulty of um, going through the system here. So uh, we will and I apologize to everybody. We will hear everybody tonight. We're committed to doing that, and I thank you for your patience and for your willingness to walk through this with me. But we're going to go to our conference room, which is fully set up on Teams. So we're not in this hearing room. Can you hear us now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. OK, um, did you have more on your slide presentation? Yes. Back to Mr. Caputo. Okay, slide number seven. The review process for an amendment differs from that of a new application. When an amendment request is received, a public hearing session is required. With an administrative amendment, such as the one requested for this project, no SEPA addendum is required. Following the informational meeting, the council will review the request before them and vote to approve or deny the amendment. For decisions that substantially change the project, the recommendation is sent to the governor for a final decision. For decisions that do not substantially change the project and or are administrative in nature, the approval or denial of the amendment request may be decided upon by the council. This concludes my presentation for this evening. Before I end, I'd like to remind everyone how they may submit comments for this proposal. If 
If you'd like to sign up to speak this evening and you are joining us virtually or by phone, you may call the FSEC main line at 360-664-1345 to be added to the speaker list. You may also send in written comments by postal mail to our, at our office at 621 Woodland Square Loop, P.O. Box 43172, Olympia, Washington, 98504. Comments may also be submitted to our online comment database at https colon backslash backslash comments.fsec.org.gov. Also the option available for the duration of the meeting for anyone wishing to submit comments through our online database. The comment line will remain open until 11.59 p.m. this evening. All comments received, regardless of method of delivery, will be saved with the project record and available to council and staff for review. Thank you. Thank you. This is Judge Bradley. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I believe now it is time for uh, the acceptance of public comments. Um, does someone have a list of people who have uh, requested to speak? This is Ms. Grantham. I have, yes, I have the list. Thank you, Ms. Grantham. So before we begin, I would just like to let folks know that you will have five minutes to make your comments and uh, unfortunately I will have to cut you off to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to speak and before you begin your comments please state your name and spell it for the court reporter and also try to speak slowly and clearly to assist our court reporter in getting a clear and accurate record. So uh, the first commenter Ms. Grantham Yes, the first person I have is Nathan Baker. Okay, Nathan Baker, are you there? I am, I'm here in the room. All right, go ahead. Good evening, Chair Drew and members of the council. My name is Nathan Baker. I'm the senior staff attorney with Friends of the Columbia Gorge. Uh, Friends of the Columbia Gorge has been involved in the Whistling Ridge matters from the very beginning, back to 2008. Uh, and in decision-making sometimes, uh, the easy and efficient option and the legally correct option and the appropriate option all converge and that's the case here. The council should recognize that this SCA or site certification agreement expired by operation of law and by its own terms. It expired by operation of law March 5th, 2022. That was 10 years after it was issued, 10 years after the effective date. The applicable law uses that term, effective date. And when the governor signed and issued the SCA, she indicated above her signature that it was effective March 5th, 2012. It expired 10 years later. Uh, the certificate holder was warned about this deadline multiple times going uh, back. Mr. Baker. Uh, I'm going to yeah. interrupt you briefly because there's a separate hearing on the extension request and it sounds to me like your comments relate more to the extension request so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Actually well I can explain that this is a threshold dispositive issue. The SCA has expired therefore it cannot be amended, it can't be modified, it can't be transferred, it can't be reinstated, it has expired. And that is a threshold issue. This has happened before with other SCAs. Uh, with the Cowlitz co-generation project in 2004, the council adopted a resolution confirming that the SCA expired by operation of law and by its own terms. That's what's happened here. That's, that's what the council should do here. And that moots out all other issues. It moots out the transfer application, the extension request, and all the the various pending motions that the parties have filed. That's what the council should do here. Uh, we have um, filed multiple objections to the process here. I will not restate those, but I do want to state for the record that 
uh, on one of those objections, as we sit here today, uh, there are more than 900 people who are on FSEC's official mailing lists and email lists for this project who have not been notified about these proceedings at all. They are completely in the dark about what's been happening in 2023 and 2024. And we've been asking for those people to be notified for eight months and it still hasn't happened. Um, regarding the transfer, Mr. McMahon said today that it's unclear whether a transfer is needed. A transfer absolutely is needed. In order 869, the adjudicative order for Whistling Ridge, the council explained that SDS Co LLC is also a certificate holder. That's in, it's on page 12 of order 869. Uh, so SDS Co LLC is a certificate holder. Uh, they're no longer in the picture. Uh, and by the way, that was SDS Co LLC. The transfer application only refers to SDS Lumber uh, Company. And there's no explanation of what the relationship is between those two companies. Those are definitely two distinct companies and that has been completely glossed over. The transfer was premature. Uh, the FSEC rules prohibit premature transfer of a site certificate. Uh, WAC 463-66-100 uh, says that no certificate shall be transferred without prior approval of the council. Well, you just heard, heard here tonight that that already happened. November 2021, they went ahead and transferred it without prior council approval. And the FSEC staff are well aware, aware of this. Uh, there's an internal um, FSEC staff draft memo that we are putting in the record uh, where the, the staff indicate their awareness and they say, quote, the petitioner, meaning Whistling Ridge, is in violation of the SCA. Ownership of Whistling Ridge Energy was transferred from SDS Lumber Company to Twin Creeks Timber in November 2021 without council approval. Whistling Ridge has not complied with its site certificate agreement. Uh, the Assistant Attorney General will provide the council with a legal brief on this topic. Um, because of that premature transfer, uh, Whistling Ridge Energy has lost standing to even request a transfer. They are violating the council's rules. Uh, finally, um, we, we are submitting a lot of material that's too voluminous to email. Uh, the staff has graciously uh, agreed to accept that material on a flash drive. So um, I will give that to Ms. Bumpus um, now and be giving a copy to uh, Whistling Ridge Energy as well. Um, and uh, it's, it's all material that's already in FSEC's possession. We're just submitting it for this record. Finally, we ask that the council please confirm that the site certificate certification agreement has expired by operation of law and by its own terms, and that moots out everything else, and the council should simply adopt a resolution and end all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. And could you please uh, spell your name for the record? Yes, Nathan, N-A-T-H-A-N, Baker, B-A-K-E-R. All right, thank you. Ms. Grantham, who is next? Yes, uh, next I have Rick Arambaru. Uh, Mr. Arambaru, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Please uh, spell your name for the record before you start your comments. Okay. Um, Ms. Bradley, uh, my, my name is Richard Arambaru. Last name is spelled A-R-A-M-B-U-R-U. -R -R my office address is 705 2nd Avenue, Seattle 98104. And I'm here tonight representing Save Our Scenic Area, a uh, organization formed back in 2007 when I originally got involved in this project. So this is my 15th or 16th year uh, being involved with the with the Whistling Ridge uh, project. Uh, we submitted uh, extensive comments to you this afternoon regarding the transfer application. Um, and I'm not going to read from those comments, but I, I do want to address um, some, some highlights. Um, to begin with uh, some timing um, issues. In October of 2020, it was announced by SDS that they were going to liquidate the company due apparently to conflicts on, on the board of directors, according to the record. In September of 2021, the SDS and TCT 
signed agreements by which essentially all of the assets of SDS would be transferred to TCT. Uh, in November of that year, there was a closing of the, of the, uh, uh, of the transaction between those entities. At no time during that period of time was the public, this council, or anyone else notified that this transfer was involved, that was, it was proceeding forward. The, the next step was a um, kind of offhand notice in March of, of 2022 that the applicant TCT was going to request a transfer and that was gonna come within a couple of weeks. So here we are now more than two years later um, and the transfer is, is just coming um, before the council. The, the process here um, involves violation of two sets of standards. One, it involves clear violation of the standards of FSIC to require that any transfer of ownership of an SCA must be uh, approved in advance, again, in advance by, by this council. That did not occur. Secondly, the transfer appears to involve a clear violation of, of commercial standards. In ordinary course, if there's a valuable asset that requires approval by a governmental agency, uh, the parties to the transaction um, seek that transfer in advance of the sale or they make the sale contingent upon seeking that approval. Here, neither one of those standards uh, was, uh, was involved. Mr. Uh, McMahon said that it was not clear whether or not a transfer application was required. That's absolutely incorrect. Uh, the council's own rules, 463-66-100, require any transfer of control of a certification agreement to be the subject of, of council approval. That has not happened in this case. Now, we've, we've heard this afternoon from uh, Vestas, Steelheads, uh, other organizations uh, that are apparently involved with this. But what we have heard is that there is no equity ownership by Vestas or Steelheads or any other organization, despite two years of, of thinking about it. There is no willingness on behalf of the transferee or steelheads or vessels to proceed with the current site certification agreement. And steelheads and vessels have, have not announced that there is any contract that actually exists between um, this uh, consultant company and the current application, the current applicant. The due diligence on this project should have, should have been undertaken a, long, long ago. Um, so the, the applicant here um, has not followed the rules. It has not sought uh, approval of its transfer. Uh, and the result of that is that the SCA has been abandoned by these, by these properties and cannot be resurrected through some proceeding here. So our request to the uh, council is to deny the transfer application and to hold that the um, site certificate agreement has been abandoned. Thank you very much. If you have questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Aramburu. Um, who is next on our list, Ms. Grantham? Next, I have Vince Reddy. Uh, Mr. Reddy, are you there? Mr. Reddy, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. All right, let's uh, try to come back to Mr. Reddy. Who's next? I'm, I'm uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, now I can hear you, Mr. Reddy. Please spell your uh, first and last name for the court reporter. Sure, it's Vince Reddy, V-I-N-C-E-R-E-A-D-Y. All right, you may proceed. Thank you. 
Um, so again, my name is Vince Reddy. Uh, I'm a resident of the gorge. I live in the heart of the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area in Hood River. And my home is located less than two miles from the proposed site of the Whistling Ridge Energy Project. I can actually see the ridge line where the towers would go when I look out my window. And I'm here this evening as a concerned citizen to provide comments on the possible transfer of the state issued permit for the project. And my interest goes way back. I gave public comments on the Whistling Ridge project prior to the issuance of the original site certification, and I've been opposed to the project ever since. Um, I'll just briefly say that I, I personally oppose the project because the wind towers would be visible along the ridge line from key viewing areas within the scenic area and aren't in keeping with the stated goals of ensuring that new development blends in with the gorgeous scenery. And while the Whistling Ridge project would technically be sited just outside the scenic area, the height and visual prominence of these towers and the increased potential height of the new ones um, is just not compatible with the landscape. So as it relates to this proposed or requested transfer, the parent company of Whistling Ridge LLC when it was formed um, was SDS Lumber. And SDS Lumber no longer exists and it ceased to exist before the necessary filings were made to FSEC in order to initiate a transfer of their site certification. So while the Whistling Ridge LLC has been a constant, its backers and the interested, interested parties involved have fundamentally changed since the sale of SDS to Twin Creek. And even if a transfer were to be considered, the current capabilities of the Whistling Ridge LLC and its members should be evaluated um, through a new application process, following current environmental review standards, and with input from the current governor. Uh, because SDS did not initiate the required filings to transfer their site certification to Timber Creek prior to their dissolution, they really missed the opportunity to receive this consideration uh, and transferring it without uh, by transferring it without notifying the FSEC Council. And at this point, SDS no longer exists and their site certification has been expired for over two years. So I believe this should be taken up as a new application if the applica applicant wishes to reestablish site certification for the project. I will say that I only learned of this hearing when I was contacted by Lance Caputo by email on May 9th, and I suspect there are many other interested parties who would have liked to provide input who missed the opportunity or lacked adequate time to prepare this evening. Um, I feel that this is more than an, administ than an administrative matter and this transfer request should be denied. Um, I feel like the project shouldn't have been approved to begin with, but certainly it shouldn't be brought back from the dead now. And I'll have more to say when we talk about the, um, the expiration matter, but thank you for, for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Uh, next, Ms. Grantham. Next, I have Brian Telligen. All right, Mr. Telligen, are you there? I, I, I'm sorry, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, please spell your first and last name for the court reporter and then you can proceed. Uh, thank you very much. First name is Brian, B-R-Y-A-N. Last name is Telegin, T-E-L-E-G-I-N. Uh, and my business uh, address is 175 Parfit, P-A-R-F-I-T-T, -T, Avenue Southwest, Suite N270, Bainbridge Island, Washington, 98110. All right, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair Drew, members of the council and Judge uh, Bradley. Uh, I am a lawyer representing Friends of the Columbia Gorge alongside Mr. Baker. <clears throat> On May 6, 2024, Friends of the Columbia Gorge submitted uh, objections to the hearing process in this matter. Uh, including raising issues under the State Environmental Policy Act or SEPA. Uh, and I understand that this, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, this particular portion of the proceeding uh, relates to the transfer request. Uh, part of our argument in our objections was that the transfer request, uh, although alongside uh, the extension request, uh, are actions under SEPA uh, that need to be reviewed before any action is taken. Uh, we received a response to that uh, from Mr. McMahon, uh, arguing that the transfer request does not qualify as an action under SEPA uh, because it does not directly modify the environment. 
Um, and uh, that, that position is wrong in our, in our view. Uh, the definition of an action under SEPA uh, is the license of activity that can modify the environment directly. Uh, and in this case, uh, the current certificate holder or the past certificate holder that, uh, has stated repeatedly that they were not and could not build this project. Now the request is to transfer it to a company that uh, apparently claims that they want to build this project. Uh, that is giving the that is giving TCT the proposed uh, transferee a license to construct this project. That is in fact a, uh, an action under SEPA. Uh, under SEPA, FSEC is required to integrate environmental review at the earliest possible stage uh, and to issue a threshold determination within 90 days within be, with, from being presented with a proposal. To our knowledge, none of this has happened. Uh, you heard Mr. Caputo say earlier uh, that SEPA review was done 13 years ago. Uh, there's been no analysis to determine whether, to our knowledge at least, to determine whether that prior SEPA review is still valid or whether there's new information. Uh, that would affect the environment. Uh, Mr. Caputo, I believe, also said that, that because the transfer was administrative in nature, it does not require SEPA review. Uh, we are not aware of a rule or a law uh, that that says such that so-called administrative actions are not subject to SEPA. Uh, so we would request that again that the council simply adopt a resolution recognizing that the site certification agreement has expired and lapsed and is no longer valid. Uh, but at any rate, no action can be taken on the proposal uh, until SEPA is complied with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Telligen. Our next speaker, Ms. Grantham. I have Eric Kloster. All right, Mr. Kloster, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, please spell record, your first and last name. Thank oh, you. Oh, of course. Uh, for the record, my name is Eric Kloster, E-R-I-C-K-L-O-S-T-E-R. -E um, I would like to talk about how the project has expired and how there was a 10-year deadline for this project. The project cannot be transferred um, to TCT um, because the site certification agreement has expired. There's been more than one and a half years after this expiration date um, and it's expired by law and by its own terms. The, ter uh, the permit cannot be transferred and all other issues are mute. Um, this is a threshold issue because expiration has already occurred. The site certification agreement is a contract and it's a permit. In the terms that it's a permit, its effective date was March 5th, 2022, uh, 2012. And that was a 10 year permit that was issued by the state for a 10 year period. That period has elapsed. And the binding date, which is November 18th, 2013, uh, was more than 10 years ago as well. And that was the date that the, um, governor of Washington at the time signed the agreement and all rights have been lost under the contract as well. Um, in addition to these issues, I would like to state that the area is an emphasis uh, region for the Northern Spotted Owl, which was uh, is an endangered species at this time. Uh, and the Northwest Forest Plan was worked with um, various different agencies. Even Bill Clinton was involved in this issue. Um, the Northwest Spotted Owl is can, the the nature and area for this species needs to be preserved. Additionally, the Western Gray Squirrel was recently uplisted to endangered, and while it doesn't exist in this area now. Um, it originally was within Skamania County. Klickitat County is where the species has been relegated to. There's three different regions within the state now, um, including Purse County and one other region north of Lake Chelan. But this area is also an important region for the visual uh, and, and touristic value that this area has. Um, across the river from, if this project was to be built, especially with the larger turbines that are proposed to be over 430 feet, 
uh, which was the original, but I know that TCT has considered getting a higher turbine uh, height. It would deeply disturb the views and just the general economic value that this area has for um, tourism, the nature value. And, and for, for these reasons, uh, the project should not be built. But the main reason why this project cannot legally be constructed is because the site certification agreement expired in 2022, 10 years after the governor issued and signed the agreement. And all rights were lost under the site certification agreement in 2023 uh, after it was executed, that is signed. Um, in the past, when site certification agreements have expired, uh, FSEC Council has determined that they died, um, that, that they had expired of their own accord. Um, in Cowlitz Generation Project in 2004, uh, that's in the council resolution number 308, March 1st, 2004, uh, the, the FSEC council at that time stated that because the 10 year period had run out, that the site certification agreement had expired and died of its own accord. Similarly here, Whistling Ridge Energy, the project and the, the contract, the effective and the binding dates have both come to pass. So I ask, and I know there are many with me, we ask that the council will recognize this fact and terminate the project. This is the only legal option available for FSEC at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kloster. Uh, Ms. Grantham, who would be next? Yes, uh, the next person I have is Dan Rowley, and I received an email as I've been uh, monitoring the comments inbox just to make sure if anybody else wanted to sign up. He's saying that he's in having an issue calling in, so I was wondering if you would be okay if I tried to dial his number directly from the teams to see if we can get him in here. Let's give that a try. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hello. Hello, is this Mr. Raleigh? Dan Raleigh, can you hear us? I can hear you, thank you. Perfect, this is Ms. Grantham. I'm giving you a call directly from the meeting and it is your turn to speak and we can hear you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I uh, don't Mr. Raleigh, Sorry, this is Judge Bradley. Could you please spell your first and last name for the court reporter? Uh, Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L, last name Raleigh, R-A-W-L-E-Y. All right, thank you. You have five minutes. Go ahead, please. Okay, um, I'm assuming that uh, most people who have uh, joined this meeting understand that the permit or certificate has expired over uh, two years ago. So I did have a couple of questions for uh, the uh, council, the FSEC council. Uh, one of those being, is there any language in their bylaws that specifically address or deal with a permit that has expired? So Mr. Rowley, this is a public comment period. And so the council okay. won't be answering questions at this time. They won't time. be answering questions. Okay, then I'll just state that um, the permit has uh, expired over um, two years ago. So uh, I am concerned with the fact that they're even having a meeting as such uh, to discuss the transfer of the, of the permit. and. Um, from my knowledge, the best I could uh, look up, that there is no uh, process in place to deal with a permit that has expired or to possibly uh, renew the permit that has already expired without going through another um, process. So at this point, I would um, say to the uh, council that um, 
that I would think that it would reflect poorly on the council to uh, proceed with the transfer of a permit that has expired uh, over two years ago. And um, it would reflect poorly on the council as well as the members. So that is what I would like to get into uh, the uh, um, report at this time for the, the first meeting. All right, thank you, Mr. Rowley. I'm glad we were able to reach you. Um, Ms. Grantham, who would be next? Yes, next I have Rudy Salakori. And is Mr. S okay, uh, spell your first and last name, please. Thank you, yep. Yeah. Um, my name is Rudy Salakori, R-U-D-Y, S-A-L-A-K-O-R-Y. Uh, Judge you. Bradley, oh, uh, you're welcome. Judge Bradley, Chair Drew, members of the council. Um, as I just stated, my name is Rudy Salakori. I'm the Conservation Director for Friends of the Columbia Gorge. As you've heard from my colleagues and a number of folks here, we have been following this project for some time. And personally, I'm, I'm perplexed that we would be discussing the transfer of a site certificate for a project that is, by all accounts, dead and done. Um, as many people have said, that's that permit has expired and the proponents had a chance, 10 years in fact, to build a project. They couldn't find a way to do it or they couldn't find the will to do that. I don't know if those circumstances have changed, but if there are changes in circumstances, they're going to line up against a landscape that has changed physically, ecologically, and in a regulatory way. I think it's, I feel it's completely inappropriate to move forward with documents and agreements that were made well over a decade ago in this changed landscape. I think the other point that I'd like to bring up is there are a number of people here, but that number is nowhere near the number of people that came out in opposition still in the area and I believe would still be in opposition. I think that's telling to the amount of public outreach that was involved in putting this hearing on. And I think it'd be only fair and good governance to be able to give the residents of the area the opportunity to weigh in on this project, which will have a severe scenic impact. As was mentioned, we're talking about wind turbines that are you know, roughly the size of the Space Needle, and you're going to put up some number of them in an area that was set aside in federal law for its scenic, natural, cultural, and recreational resources. Um, I'll say more in the extension hearing, but I really just want to take this opportunity to reiterate that uh, the transfer of a, of a expired permit seems very curious to me, and I would strongly recommend that that transfer not go through, and that it's entirely appropriate if this project were to move forward, that it move forward under a new application process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salicori. Uh, Ms. Grantham, who's our next speaker? Uh, next, I have Keith Brown. Mr. Brown, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please spell your first and last name. Uh, it's Keith Brown, K-E-I-T-H-B-R-O-W-N. I live in Washougal, Washington, and my spouse and I, Teresa Robbins, sent the council uh, a uh, detailed letter this afternoon. Uh, I'll read just portions of that letter. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, council members. Most, if not all of you, were not a part of the FSEC Council in 2009. Therefore, you were not present to hear the overwhelming, widespread community opposition to what was known as the Whistling Ridge Energy Project. You should have scheduled this hearing in the Underwood Community Center, where you would have heard from the affected community firsthand. You first scheduled a virtual only hearing and then at the last minute made it hybrid, requiring people to travel to Lacey if they wanted to address you in person. Had you conducted this hearing on transferring ownership, you would have likely heard the same level of concerns and objections as was heard in 2009. To give you some idea, we have provided a summary and selection of comments from the scoping process. 
Of the 363 separate written comments from individuals and organizations expressing an opinion, the overwhelming majority, 336, expressed concerns and or objections. That's 93%, while only 27 individuals expressed some sort of support. That's 7%. Unfortunately, you can no longer review the comments on the website, FSEC website for yourself as the link has been removed. Given the time limit, I'll share just three of those 300, 363 comments. Quote, desecrating the views will discourage visitors and the tourist revenue that benefits the region. You would not build a wind generator farm on Half Dome in Yosemite, Mount Rainier, or along the rim of Crater Lake. In a like vein, you should not build one in or near the gorge. Comment number 163 from Tom Rousseau, Hood River. Quote, I just happened to have taken one of the most beautiful hikes I can remember on the Washington side of the gorge last weekend. Some of the most beautiful and well-preserved land in the country. Unblemished area available to the public. And I feel lucky as a 30-something to have access to a pristine Columbia River Gorge scenic area. I would hate to, to say it was my generation that ruined this beautiful and sensitive habitat for a new energy project with so many wind turbines. I am opposed. Comment number 64, Anne Clutona, Portland. And finally, quote, proximity to numerous residential areas, water use issues, visual impacts from both turbines and navigational lighting, potential negative impacts for local agribusiness and property values. These are just some of the many important reasons which question the wisdom of citing a major energy project of this magnitude in this area. Scenic areas, boundaries were drawn with the reasonable assumption that dozens of high scrape, uh, skyscraping height structures would not be built in the middle of the forest. This project may meet the letter of the law, but certainly would break the spirit of the Scenic Act. Comment number 335, Matthew Ryan, Underwood. On September 13th, 2023, more than a year and a half after the permit expired, requests were filed with FSEC to resurrect the expired permit and transfer the permit to a new owner. This request should have been dead on arrival. We urge FSEC to deny the request to revive the expired permit and the transfer of the permit and the project to Twin Peaks Timber. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Ms. Grantham, our next speaker, please. Yes, our next speaker is another person who had difficulties calling in, Mary Ree Parr. So I will also give her a dial in. Thank you. It looks like she might have joined. Mary, is that you? Hi, I've joined in. Hello, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, so this I'm is Judge Bradley. Can you spell your first and last name for the court reporter, please? Uh, my name is Mary Rapar, M-A-R-Y, Rapar, R-E-P-A-R. Thank you, and you have five minutes, so you can proceed. I'm not sure what I'm proceeding on. I haven't been able to join the meeting. Which section are we on here? Oh, we're still hearing comments on the transfer request. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so it's my turn to speak? Correct. Oh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Mary Rapar, and I'm calling in from Stevenson, Washington. 
Um, I've also submitted two letters, one on the transfer and one on the extension of the SCA. Uh, but uh, speaking on the transfer, um, you know, businesses can do whatever they want in some ways, but in other ways, um, we the public are involved. Uh, Whistling Ridge was a project from many, many moons ago. Uh, I worked on it extensively. I have I put in hundreds of pages of comments opposing it on um, grounds of uh, danger to the environment and uh, the location and mass wasting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so um, to have another company come in 12 years later and ask to transfer something from one entity to another, uh, I, I think uh, if it had been done in a timely basis uh, after the project was, uh, was approved in, to be done, even though it was not economically feasible, uh, according to SDS, um, I'm not quite sure uh, why uh, Twin Creeks is coming here to uh, ask for a transfer. I uh, I can only think that perhaps it's uh, because they think they might be able to sell the project to someone else. Uh, I'm, I'm not speaking for them. This is just my thought. And um, I don't think the transfer should be approved. Um, this project is old. The DEIS, FEIS are stale and old. And uh, if there's any uh, new project proposal, then it should go through the public process that it, the other project, uh, the first project had to go through. So again, I really oppose transferring uh, the, uh, uh, transferring the um, control um, of the ownership of Whistling Ridge uh, from SDS Lumber to Twin Creek Timbers. Uh, I'm sorry to sound so disjointed, but I've been trying to join you all for over an hour and a half, and it's driven me crazy. Uh, but at any rate, uh, please uh, consider the aspect of why this is being asked now and uh, by a company who was not involved in at all in the original uh, FEIS and DEIS and all the public input that was involved in getting us to this point. Uh, again, I would ask FSEC to deny the transfer of uh, of this uh, project from uh, the SDS Lumber to Twin Creek and uh, to transfer the ownership of the SCA too. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'd, I'll be glad to hear them. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Grantham, our next speaker. Uh, that concludes the speakers that I had on the prior sign-up sheet. All right. Is there anyone uh, on Teams who would like to raise their hand? Not seeing any additional requests to speak. I'll turn it back to you, Chair Drew. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Bradley. Thank you to everybody who um, spoke. Thank you all for your patience and thank you for trying to get in again. And um, I apologize for all the challenges people have had this evening. We are going to take a break. We will come back to exactly this site. Is that right? Yes. So if you want to stay on, stay on, and we'll be back at seven o'clock for the next hearing. <laughs>